Okay, Internet Brain Trust, let's talk about the parts off of this. So, we've got some calipers, we got the newfangled head, we got the newfangled carburetor, and a few things. First of all, let's kill a few arguments already that just will not shut up and go away. This is the rod. It is a 0.78 for this. It is a 1.514 for this. I already spent half an hour on the phone with ARC and talked with them. The reality is there is jack diddly that is going to fit in order to just swap in as a racing rod. Now this thing is a pretty darn beefcake, but the real reality is nobody makes the bearing assembly in order to do the 1.514 that this thing has. From center to center, it is just a little bit longer than a stock GX390 or a 440 rod. So there's that side of things that people have been asking about. Alright, we're going to take a look at the head, and then we're going to rip apart the carburetor and find out what's going on with this wonky looking thing. As far as the head is concerned, we've got our intake on that side. We've already pulled our valves it has a beautiful geometry coming into there. And what I also wanted to note, because people asked, was that the valve guide is most definitely metal. It is steel. And it is steel and steel on both of those. Now, to end the other moronic comment that keeps coming up, no, you are not going to buy this and cram it on your GX390. It is not going to happen, okay? Those holes are different. Those holes are different. This thing is 90 millimeters across. There is no way you're sticking it on your GX. I'm sorry. Get over it. Now, the other thing that's different here is the valves. The valves are the same exact diameter without any issue, but the valves are much, much taller. So let's grab a set of calipers. We're going to do things in millimeters. So we have 43.25. And one thing I will definitely tell you is that a stock set of valves, like, that's no problem. These, on the other hand, are compressed all the way to there, almost. And as you can see, I can just barely move them. I could not get these out by hand. I had to go get my compression tool. So I'll post a link for the compression tool that ended up working on that. Keep in mind I had to use a 2x4 on the valve side, but it did work. The caps are going to be... They're going to be 25... Nineteen point four center is fourteen point eight, and the through distance is I mean, the through diameter is eight millimeter. Now, this does have valve keepers like an automotive style, so it does have these horrifying little buggers. So, I will see if I can pinch them and get the top measurement. See if I can pinch one here. These are hard to hold on to. And the top measurement on that is 9 millimeter. Inner measurement is going to be five 
Yeah, five millimeter on the inner measurement. Okay, so this one here is the bigger one. This would be your intake. I like how they put IN for intake and they put EX for exhaust so you can't screw it up. We've got 40. Yeah, we got about 40 there. Got a shaft diameter of 6.5, 6.54. Try another spot, 6.5. 6.5 the distance to keeper notch center of notch to top is six millimeter overall length is about 90 about 96 and these aren't flat bottoms they're dished in, just as a note. Okay. These are also 96. Also 6.5. And like I said, they say EX on them, so you really can't screw up which is which. And 34.8, so basically 35. So there's those. I don't remember if I grabbed a height on that, so we'll just throw it right here just in case. Whoops, without cap. Without cap, it is, yeah, 43. We did do that, and I did forget to do the width on it. So the width on it is 25. Uh, one comment that came in was, what size is the dowel pin for the rocker? And that is eight millimeter. And it is from end to end. It is 55 millimeter. The rocker from point to point is 55 millimeter. And it does look to be a one to one ratio rocker. We're just going to guesstimate here and see what it looks like. Got about 24 there. No, actually, that's a little bit, that's about 24 to center there. That's about, probably about 30 or so to center there. So the ratio isn't one to one, it's off just a little. So there we go. There's the heads there. We did some other measurements in the other video. I'll make sure to post a link to the other video down below in case you're looking for info. All right, let's pop open this carburetor, but also one thing that people asked was the lifters after the last video. The lifters are exactly the same as the GX390. Same size, same length, same everything. So let's take a look at this carburetor. This carburetor has a really oddball idle screw thing going on here. It's epoxy sealed where the adjusters usually would be. And there's no silt bowl on there, which there usually is on most Duramax carburetors. So let's pop this dumb solenoid safety out of here and see if this will come out. Now, I just noticed that it looks as if there's a large nut underneath this solenoid safety. So if that's the case, I'll have to grab something to see if we can pop that loose. 
I wonder what the chances are that it's a standard half inch like most carburetors usually are. Well, there we go. That's a good sign. So when you apply voltage to it, that goes in. When you let off the voltage, that comes out and it clogs up the jet bottom. So that is able to be sliced in order to fix the Californications. Ah. Okay, let's throw some wrenches at it. How do you know that you're a small engine guy that works on lawn tractors? You have a half inch wrench that is cut like this one is. So, nope. Okay, 13. 12. 14. Oh, so we, f oh no. Do you not fit? Oh, look at that. That 14 fits, but it won't fit because of this. Oh, we're going to have to find a slim socket, I bet. Okay. I don't know who ate their Wheaties when they put that stupid thing in there, but anyways. So I broke it free with the 150-pound electric Ooga Dooga. So there's that. And I'll lift it up for you guys to see here. That's got multi-ports coming into it. Now if we grab the Californication here, and we stick that in there. So these would be sealed inside, so that port right there is the only thing that would be sucking up gas. But that's quite a giant port. So we cut that tip off, and that should make life better. We'll set that right there. Now let's see if the rest of this is just normal. Okay. That's interesting. It does have silt spots right there. So that's interesting. Let's pop this just to make sure that it's a regular standard setup. And it is. Got a brass insert there. Looks good quality. It has the same insert ring that the HIPAA carburetors use. So that's good. I like that upgrade. Now granted, at this point, there is nobody whatsoever that would have the right size carburetor for this other than Duramax. But, let's see if we can pop this out. Well, we either stripped it or it came loose. It's jets or brass, so it's not like you can just stuff up. There, okay. So, uh, looks like a stock Venturi tube. Nothing special on that. But that bugger is gargantuan. Yeah, that is huge. And I think I saw some writing on it. Let's see if we can flip this around. What does that say? 108. I wonder if that actually means anything, or somebody just stomped it on there because they could. So 108 is on there. Okay, let's grab... Alright, let's grab our drill bit set that we tend to gauge everything by. And see what we're at here. Now, I post a link to this drill bit set in any video that I pop it out because then it gives a reference that people can go by so that you can do the exact same as what I'm doing. Let's try this tip, 0.8. So let's see this. Oh yeah, that's got tons of loose going on. Okay, so this should be the one millimeter. Yep, this is the one. 
Oh yeah, still extremely loose. Still extremely loose. Holy cow, we might end up outside of my micro bits. Oh, wait there. That hit. Okay. So we're somewhere in between those two. So this micro bit says that it is... Oh, I got the wrong kind of lighting to read this thing. 1.10. So, 1.10 supposedly was too big, and 1.0 had a little bit of shake in it. Yeah, I can still shake that back and forth. So, yeah, that's giant on the scale of drill bits. I mean, a GX390 is down in this area. And then the 440 is usually one of these two. So we're clear up into this. I mean, we're borderline methanol jet at that point for most stuff. So that's pretty giant. Well, we'll pop this back in and then we'll see if we can find out what in the world's going on with that really weird idler circuit there. So that goes in like that. And we look down through to make sure that it actually settled in all the way. And get it shooken in. Nope, that's not settling in. Why is it being stupid? All right, well, we'll drop this in and we'll see if it settles in once it gets some pressure on it. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so it's just a tight fit down in there. All right, so we'll snug that up. But yeah, that Venturi is giant. That that hole in, the, I mean, sorry, that jet is giant. That's literally probably about as big as the one that I race. Okay, I didn't happen to notice if this actually technically had a direction. But I would assume that the flat side goes towards that side. Because that would make sense because then this would be accessible in order to drain the sediment section. So I'll throw that back in. Alright. I'm going to end up taking this and cutting off the tip on the stupid safety because of the fact that inevitably it causes problems. So we're just going to leave that out, but I'm going to tighten this down so that everything's all settled and ready to go. And actually, if this is steel, you could weld that shut. Yep, it is. So if you wanted to, you could pull the O-ring off of that, weld it shut, and then not have to deal with the stupid solenoid. All right. Let's see if we can pull out whatever is going on with this weird idle jet idea down here. Because normally these are press in. Let me grab one to show you. See, normally they look like this. And you can buy these individually and you can press them in. This is a standard GX390 carburetor. And you can see how gargantuanly bigger this thing is. Okay. Oh, there it goes. All right, so it wasn't epoxied in place. I was extremely worried that that was going to be the case. Okay, what is this weird little bugger? Come on. Well, that is certainly interesting. Check this out. Ah, it's interesting. It is entirely brass. So that right there is your actual idle jet port. And then this is where it blows through and siphons 
the idle jet through. Interesting. So you could potentially actually drill that in order to fix idle issues, which is not something you can do on a plastic one. But the other problem is, is that means this is excruciatingly proprietary. So I don't know how I feel about that. Well, there we go. I think I've rattled on enough for now. I'm going to put this back together and I'll probably throw the engine back together and trying to decide what I want to do with it. I mean, it's a free $500 engine to me, so maybe I should do something on the more oddball build. I haven't quite decided yet. Anyways, if this was helpful, leave me a like. If you thought it was interesting, tell me so in the comments, because right now, that's the best algorithmic thing you can do for me, is throw a comment down there. Alright guys, have a good day.